BMT only eating at the defect, coming to tech school only eating at the defect, and then being allowed to eat at a restaurant is super nice. Tech school phases is one of those things that people don't have much information on before arriving at tech school. So I'm going to explain the tech school phases to you. So after you graduate BMT and you go to tech school, you are going to be in phase one. You're a new airman and you need to get acclimated to the environment. Just figure out how things work and make sure you're following the rules. So something to note is that the amount of phases you have and the length you are in that phase are going to differ with every single tech school that you go to. You are going to be in phase one and the length of phase one is 10 days. I've heard of other tech schools having phase one for 30 days. The next thing is going to be that you have to wear your uniform at all times, even on the weekend, not to change out of their OCPs until after dinner, because whenever you're in the dorms, just hanging out in the day room, just wanting to relax a little bit, you can be in your PT gear because it's still official Air Force uniform, but you're not allowed to leave the dorms without your OCPs on. So it just makes sense to stay in them the whole time until after dinner, and then you know you're not leaving and going anywhere else. That way you don't have to change back and forth. So while you're in phase one, it is mandatory that you go to breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the DFAC. Even though there are other restaurants on base, you are only authorized to eat at the DFAC. Now, even though there's not a lot of options when it comes to room personalization, you are not allowed to personalize your room while you're in phase one, you'll be issued a few sheets and a blanket, and that is all you're allowed to have on your bed. And then new airmen in phase one, you're gonna wanna make sure you have your blues ready because you are going to wear your blues for the first few days while you're in processing. While you're in phase one, you are not able to go off base. You also cannot be in a personally owned vehicle. So that means you cannot drive a car and you cannot ride with anyone else. So if you need to get somewhere, you can either walk or take the bus. So although you have some restrictions in phase one, you can still go to the exchange and go shopping. You can also start ordering things online and receiving mail right away, which brings us to the amazing sponsor of today's video, Sandbox. Sandbox is a veteran owned company that helps keep your loved ones connected from recruitment to retirement. I personally use Sandbox when I was at BMT and it was so helpful because your friends and family can send a letter from anywhere with their mobile app. I received a letter literally two days after it was written, which is crazy. So Sandbox does make receiving mail at military training a lot faster. And now I'm here at tech school and people are receiving Sandbox letters here as well and they have so much more information to help your loved ones navigate your military career. So be sure to check them out at sandbox.us. So the next question you all probably have is how do you go from phase one to phase two? So like I said, you're going to be in phase one for at least 10 days. And then on that 10th day, you are going to report into your MTL that you are prepared to phase up and they are going to do a uniform inspection and a room inspection. And if you pass those two things, then you will be allowed to go to the next phase. So the first thing that changes is curfew from 2100 to 2200. So we get that extra hour. And then on the weekends, on Friday and Saturday, curfew is extended to midnight. And everyone's favorite part of phase two is that you are authorized to wear civilian clothes. Now, of course, we are authorized to eat at restaurants. I'm going to BMT, only eating at the defect coming to tech school, only eating at the DFAC, and then being allowed to eat at a restaurant is super nice. Also, you're not required to go to the DFAC for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You still have to go there for lunch because that is the duty day. So major changes that people very much appreciate is you are now authorized to go off base. You can drive a car and you can ride in a car. There are tons of people at tech school that do not have cars. So a lot of times they ask other people if they can take them somewhere. That is basically the changes that you get from phase one to phase two. Phase three, but it's not good. You don't get more freedom in phase three. Phase three means you're in phase two and then you got in trouble and so now you're in phase three. So going to phase three brings back all of the restrictions that you had in phase one with additional punishments on top of that. So it might be verbal counseling, it might be paperwork or anything else that your MTLs or commanders say that you have to do as your punishment in that phase. The other difference is that you don't get to just be off of it in 10 days. It is going to depend on what happened to get you in trouble and how severe that is. So then you have to wear your uniform all the time again. So it's kind of embarrassing because people know like, oh, they did something to get in trouble. It is really easy to stay out of phase three. 
Sometimes there are mistakes that are made. Sometimes people get grouped into a situation where they're not the ones who did it, but they were a part of it. Typically it is one person making a choice to do the wrong thing and then they get caught for it and then they get put on phase three. So as long as you go to tech school, you have good intentions, you are following the rules. If you have any questions, you're gonna have mentors, you're gonna have ropes who are going to help guide you and lead you to do what you are supposed to do to be successful in tech school. So please just go in there with that mindset. Don't try to do anything stupid. Don't try to do anything where you're like, oh, well, I'll just do this. I'm not gonna get caught. You're probably gonna get caught and then you're gonna get mad about it when you were the one to make that decision. So please just be smart for your own good. That way you can have the best experience possible while you're at tech school. But there you have it. That is what phases are like at tech school. And again, like I said, every single tech school is going to differ. If this video helped give you a better understanding of what tech school phases are like, be sure to subscribe because we are here to share information with you to help set you up for success, help give you a better understanding so you can make the best decisions for yourself moving forward. I wish you all the best of luck in your career and I will see you in another video.